Hey! You're alive! When I dragged you out of the river, I thought you were never gonna wake up. I checked your pockets for ID. A phone, maybe? I hope you don't mind. But all I found was some loose change. So... Wanna tell me who you are? Well, it's nice to meet you. And I'm sorry to pry, but any idea why you were floating down the river? What's the last thing you remember? It does look like you took a pretty hard blow to the head. You're just lucky you've been given a second chance. Which is why I feel terrible for what I'm about to say, but I have a favor to ask. There are some ruins just behind you. Roman, I think. I need you to go in there and see if you can find a guy named Al for me. He went in there a few hours ago, and he hasn't come out. I've been freaking out, wondering if he's trapped, or injured, or worse. I would have gone in after him, but he made me promise to stay here, no matter what. There's no way I'm leaving without him, so I'm just kind of... stuck here, waiting. I need... what I mean is, I was hoping... You wouldn't mind going in there to find him? If you can do that, I can get both of you back to civilization in my boat. Please? Oh, of course. Sorry, I don't mean to be pushy, I just... What do you want to know? Oh, there's not much to tell. Feels like I've spent my whole life in a dead-end job with an endless commute. Know what I mean? Oh, uh, I'd rather not say if it's all the same to you. Look, if you really want to know all the tragic details, perhaps I can fill you in after you find Al? He's the guy who washed up on the riverbank not long before you did. I thought maybe you two knew each other. I guess not. But maybe the two of you can piece together what you're doing here. In any case, you'll like him, I'm sure. Once you find him, that is. You really don't remember? We're in Italy. This river is the Tiber. Not much, really. But imagine what you might find in there. Priceless ancient artifacts. Al... What am I, an idiot? You could hike a long, long way in any direction and never find another soul. Trust me. Great. So you're ready to go look for Al? My hero. The entrance is just past those columns behind you. Oh, and he left this here. But I think you'll need it more than I will. If you're reading this, it means I've discovered the entrance to an ancient Roman city hidden deep underground. Its existence is long forgotten.
all knowledge of it lost, except in the Latin inscript. An inscription here. It reads, You who wish to enter the city, step forth and be judged. The virtuous shall be rewarded with eternal life in paradise. The wicked shall find themselves showered in gold, but in vain, for this shall be their final resting place. Could an underground city have remained a secret for all this time? The people have survived down there, against the odds. It seems there's only one way to find out. If I'm not back in an hour, I'm somewhere on the other side. Consider this an invitation or a warning. Al Worth. this. I'm sorry you had to find me like this. And worse, she'll suffer the same fate I did. I've spent a lifetime in this place, going around and around in circles, searching for a way out. The inscription was right. There is no way back. And here there are only two options. Death, or that godforsaken doorway into the past. I made the mistake of stepping through it to set things right, and I tried, I really tried. Whatever I did, it took me right back to the beginning. Don't make the same mistake. Better to end it all now, and find out what awaits you beyond that portal.
Salve, friend. I'm Galerius. Mind telling me who you are and what you were doing in the Shrine of Proserpina? Uh, what? I'm speaking Latin. You are too, although your accent's a little strange. Oh, I see what you did there, changing the subject like that. Nice try, but I'll ask again. Who are you, and what were you doing in the shrine? Yeah, you know, agricultural goddess of springtime? You're not from around here, are you? And you've just done it again! You're a sly one, aren't you? One more time, who are you, and what were you doing in that shrine? Oh, is that right? Well, just make sure you don't get lost in any other sacred places you're not supposed to be. Can't have you disrespecting the gods by accident, can we now? But listen, most folks seem a bit confused when they get here, but you... You seem very lost, and in more ways than one. So let me make this nice and simple for you. Live by our law here, and we'll all get along just fine. Not laws, law. There's just one, the golden rule, and the punishment for breaking it's... well, it's kind of horrific. But our magistrate insists we take all newcomers to see him, so I guess I'll let him fill you in. So then, are you coming? Follow me. When I first arrived, I couldn't believe there were people living down here. But, as you can see, we've got a nice little community now. Only 23 of us at the moment, if you count the three who are missing. No idea how, since nobody knows a way out. But it's just big and dark enough to get lost in, if you're not careful. Aren't you going to introduce me to your handsome new friend, Galerius? Keep it in your loincloth, Aurelia. I'm taking him to see the magistrate. That pompous old boar won't be magistrate for much longer. Anyone who helps vote him out today, drinks at my bar for free tonight. Uh, politics. I'd stay clear of it and her, if I were you. She's... uh, it's not my place to say. Down on your right is our farm, where I grow all the food you'll ever want. As long as all you want is leek, cabbage and wheat. Ah, that one usually gets a chuckle. The bloodless shadows wander without flesh or bone. Ah, don't mind Livia. She means well. She's just been in a bad place since... Well, you know, I don't know what happened to her. Up here on your right is the chasm. If you've got a weapon, it belongs way down at the bottom. Up on your left is the forum, where you can visit the market or get yourself patched up in Lucretia's clinic in the Shrine of Apollo. Most of us have almost nothing. Just what we had on us when we arrived, and what we've been able to make and scrounge up since. And this central plateau is where the Magistrate and the other patricians live, so don't expect a warm welcome. Galerius, you're meant to be working the farm, not trudging dirt into the villas. Take it easy, Horatius. I was just taking our new friend here to see the Magistrate. Well, he's asked me to escort the newcomer personally. The farm. Go. Now. You'd better go with him. But just remember, they're not like you and me. Don't let them use you. What was that? What did you just say? Uh, I said it'll take some getting used to. Yeah, I'm watching you, farm boy. Greetings, citizen. My name's Horatius. Magistrate Sentius asked me to escort you to him personally. Follow me, please. I expect the Magistrate wants to brief you about the Golden Rule. It shouldn't take too long. He's busy preparing for the election later today. Follow me. The only thing you really need to understand right now is the Golden Rule. Let me see if I can explain it this way. When I was serving in the Legion, if there was a mutiny brewing in one cohort, the legate in charge wouldn't waste time finding the bad apples among hundreds. They just divided us into groups of ten, made us draw straws, and whoever drew the short straw had to be executed by the other nine. Didn't matter whether he'd done anything wrong. One of us in ten would die for the crimes of the Collective. We call it decimation. If that seems like rough justice to you, 
You're in for a rude shock. Because the Golden Rule is exactly ten times worse. The Magistrate can explain the rest. He's up these stairs. We're finally alone. I assume you already know who I am. May I know your name? A curious name to match a curious accent. But I digress. Now, you're probably wondering why I summoned you, and I'll get to that. But first, take a look at this wondrous place, would you? A secret city built deep in the mountains many hundreds of years ago. In good time. More importantly, consider the miraculous community we've built here over the last seven months. Twenty-two complete strangers brought together by the fates living and working together in our own little paradise. And in all that time, not a single sin has been committed. No fights, no theft, nothing. Have you ever witnessed something so extraordinary as a city without sin? Nor could I until I came here. But the reason for this, this miracle is as simple as it is terrifying. If even one person commits a sin here, every last one of us will die. You see, the builders of this place, whoever they were, left inscriptions warning, the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. From what we can gather, breaking the law here will anger the gods and provoke a terrible punishment like the curses of Medusa and Midas combined, turning us all to gold. We've come to call it the Golden Rule. It's extraordinary that we've survived as long as we have, and each day I grow more and more afraid that our time in the sun is almost up. And now it seems that day is finally here, all that matters is that somebody in this city is about to break the Golden Rule. Why else would Proserpina send you now? Unless you and I can stop them, our doom is assured. I know that's a lot to take in, and you look like you have questions. Please, ask away. An intelligent question. There was a good deal of debate about that in our first weeks here. Does it refer to crimes, or to some other ill-defined wrong? Of course, everyone agrees on the basics. No theft, no assault, and certainly no murder. But beyond that, it was more difficult to reach a consensus. What about lying, insulting someone, blasphemy, trespass, trying to escape, bribery, infidelity, suicide? As magistrate, I had to exercise leadership, and so I made a decision. We must uphold the laws of the Empire to a standard never before seen. And we must honor the peace of the gods, the sacred accord between the gods and the people of Rome. It is only by offering the gods the proper respect that we may prosper, as Rome has for centuries. I'm glad you agree. The key things to remember are that we have laws forbidding treason and blasphemy, murder, assault, and rape, as well as theft and arson and so on. I have made my pronouncement on the subject. Unfortunately, there are still those here who resist, whispering blasphemous and treasonous lies in the shadows. I would be keeping a close eye on them if I were you. You see, in my search for a way to save my people, I learned of an ancient ritual to Proserpina, the goddess of the cycle of life and renewal. 
It's said to open a doorway in time, so that if the unthinkable happens, one person can pass through it and travel back to the past. And when I saw you arrive in a flash of light from the goddess's shrine, I knew that person was you. You don't belong in our time, do you? Two thousand years? That is unfathomable. Please, tell me, in your time, what did you see? What had become of us, of this city? I have imagined it, our downfall, a thousand times. But it still breaks my heart to hear the truth of it. All I can tell you is that it's a ritual sacrifice to Proserpina. I stumbled across instructions. I have to recite a prayer, and of course, as with all rituals, some sacrifice is involved. Usually that means wine or food, or in some cases, a live animal. In this case, the sacrifice is rather more costly. The life of the person performing the ritual. I don't suppose you saw any sign of me in the future? Ah, I assume that was me. If I'm forced to perform the ritual, it's going to cost me everything. You'll try to make sure I don't need to use it, won't you? Well, thank you for your candor, I suppose. Well, I believe you're in the best position to go around asking people questions. You're new here, and it'll seem perfectly normal. As for me, well, it pains me to say my attempts to impose order have not earned me many friends. I fear I may not even remain magistrate after today's election. The people here would only treat my curiosity with suspicion. You shouldn't have that problem, though, unless, of course, you get off on the wrong foot. Do you ever stare at a problem for so long that you can't see it for what it is anymore? What's needed here is a fresh pair of eyes. The less I prejudice the independence of your investigation, the better. Me? Why would you suspect me? I've just told you. I'm about to sacrifice my own life to ensure these people have a second chance. What reason could you possibly have to suspect me, of all people? I'm glad you think so. Without trust, without each other, we won't be able to prevent what is about to happen. Well, all right. There are those who wish to vote me out of office so that they can pursue their own misguided political agenda. Frankly, their selfishness and recklessness risk destabilizing the entire city. I would be looking very carefully at them if I were you. You mean you couldn't speak Latin before you arrived here? How strange. But the gods are active here, and their temples and shrines hum with power like nowhere else in the Empire. Perhaps when Proserpina brought you here, she planted the seed of Latin in your mind so that you could better serve her. An unbeliever then? If you come up with a better explanation, I'll be interested to hear it. If I understand Proserpina's ritual correctly, that problem should take care of itself. Let me see if I can explain. If you manage to prevent the sin that breaks the golden rule, I won't need to bring you here. I won't create the portal, and you will never have been able to come here. Thus, you'll have created a paradox. If this occurs, you should be flung back to your own time, having changed the past for all of us. Make sense?
Ah, good. So, are you with me? Can I count on you to figure out who's about to break the golden rule? No, I don't suppose you do. But I'm hoping that even if you're not burdened with a sense of self-sacrifice, you'll at least see the sense in self-preservation. Wonderful. Now, I need you to investigate the city, talk to everyone, help them if it'll win their trust. I authorize you to enter private homes and inspect possessions and documents, unless, of course, you're asked to leave. Figure out who the culprit is, and as soon as you have a name, come back and tell me immediately. Oh, and one last thing. If I were you, I'd start my investigation by visiting Lucretia at the Shrine of Apollo in the Forum. I heard wailing from there not long ago. Seems like something's not right. shall suffer for the sins of the one. Salve, friend. I'm Galerius. <laughs> uh, I... Oh, Bacchus, how much did I drink? Oh, and since you seem to be in a hurry, you should try out this device I made. Worked real hard on it. Just attach the pulley to the rope over the lake and hang onto the handles. If it works, it'll be faster than walking. And if it doesn't work, worst thing that can happen is you'll take a swim in the lake. I haven't quite summoned the courage to test it myself. But don't worry, it's completely safe. Probably. All right, see you around.
What are you doing in here? Can't you see this woman is dying? She's been poisoned. She needs the resin of a plant called Silphium, but that cool as Cumulatus Decius won't give it to me. It's too late. She just slipped away. She was poisoned. She came in here frothing at the mouth. Normally I'd treat her with resin of Silphium, a rare plant which is perfect for this sort of thing. And I knew Decius had some at his market stall, right around the corner. So I ran over there, but he just looks at me with this evil smile and says, That'll be a thousand denarii. There was no way I could afford that, and he knew it. Then that toad shrugs and says, Supply and demand. I guess you don't value your friend's life that highly. Anywhere else, I'd just pay a thug to steal it from his stall. But there's no way I can do that down here with the golden rule. So all I could do is come back here and just watch her die. I kept on apologizing. And now I'll never know who poisoned her or how they managed to do it without breaking the golden rule. Or why she cursed that snake's cruel black eyes with her dying breath. Well, unless you have the power to bring someone back from the dead, there's really just one thing you can do. Get me that Silphium resin. I'm going to have another patient in here soon. Could be in the next day or in the next hour. And I will not allow this to happen again. I don't care how you get it, but you have to make it happen. Because if I lose another patient this way, I swear to the gods below, not even the golden rule will stop me from marching up to that genetric Kamfututo and scratching his eyes out. Then you'd better get me that Silphium quickly, hadn't you? May Apollo keep you safe. Whatever's in that great temple up there on the bluff, I bet it's worth a fortune. Salve, stranger, and welcome to our idyllic little slice of the Empire. I'm Dacius. Terrible shame what happened to Yulia. But we just have to carry on, don't we? Certainly. All I ask is a reasonable price of a thousand denarii. Oh, it's perfectly legal. Simply a question of supply and demand, I'm afraid. Take it or leave it. Hear what? Ah, uh, you sure you're feeling all right? If you're hearing things, perhaps you should pay a visit to Lucretia's clinic. We don't want another navier on our hands. Well, she claimed the statue was a whispering to her. Nobody else could hear it. Then she shut herself in the palace and we never heard from her again. But I digress. Do you want this Silphium or not? That's hardly my concern. But if you get a job, work hard and save your coins, you should be able to afford it within, say, five years? Well, if you did that, you'd break the golden rule and we'd share the same fate as the last lot who lived here. Is that what you want? Do you think I don't know a bluff when I see one? Nice try. Very well. Perhaps I can interest you in something within your budget? You mean, how did I end up here? That is a lengthy tale. All right. 
Well, you see, I'm in the business of procuring rare and precious objects liberated from the enemies of Rome. Mostly sculptures, vases, the occasional slave, fetch a magnificent price in Roman high society. Had myself a nice little shop in Rome, just off the Forum. Lots of foot traffic and close to the docks. Good place to be when the fires broke out. See, about seven months ago, half of Rome caught on fire. Everyone who couldn't get to an outer gate was running for the river, open to escape by barge. So I gathered my coins and some priceless vases into a cart and had my most loyal slave girl, pretty young thing named a camphor, push it for me. All the way down to the river, I'm elbowing for a stampede of people, turning back now and then to make sure she hasn't legged it with my valuables. But, to my surprise, we make it, and I see this barge loading up, and it's so full it's almost sinking. But the captain's happy to take my coin, so I start boarding, and then he puts his hand on my chest and he says, No, too heavy. The cart or the girl. So I did what anyone would have done. Of course I chose the car. I mean, I can always buy a new slave girl, if I still have my money. So I put my hand on the car, and I guess she realised what was happening because those pretty black eyes of hers go all wide. And in one swift motion, she topples the whole bloody thing into the Tiber. Naturally, I dived in after it, hoping to salvage my fortune. Only, I guess I must have hit my head or something, because everything went black. When I came to, I'd washed up on the riverbank, not far from here, with nothing in the world but a single silver coin. I couldn't agree more. I mean, sure, I'd lost a few thousand denarii, but I've already made it back, and this place is a veritable treasure trove. Look around you, there must be more gold in here than in the treasury of Rome. If I can just figure out how to get it out of here. I'm afraid not. If you're desperate, I did hear that Aurelia down at the tavern claims to know of a way out, but I'm not sure I trust her. Some people here are a little shady for my liking. Oh yeah, gotta watch out. Old Dacius has got your back though. It's terrible for inflation is what it is. There's so much gold just lying around, it's practically worthless. At least down here. Of course, I have an idea for generating real wealth, but what I need is a bow. Just a simple composite bow. I've scoured this city from top to bottom with no luck. But if you happen to find one, bring it to me and we'll talk. Oh, well, technically yes, but that just means you'll need to be a little discreet. Thank you, friend. Maliolus. I mean, Sentius couldn't even keep his daughter safe. What hope does he have of protecting us? <laughs> Not going to happen. Very well. Another time. shall suffer for the sins of the one. Salve, friend. Mind telling me who it... Uh... Ah, 
you're here. I'm so glad you decided to visit. I'm Aurelia, and uh, I hope I'm not being too forward, but the moment I laid eyes on you, I was intrigued. You're not like any Roman man I've ever seen. You seem so refined, so civilized. Ugh, coming on a bit strong, don't you think? <sighs> I take back what I said. Attack or pursue Suddenly, the stone I don't find you so intriguing return. anymore. Let's just forget that ever happened, so we can at least do business. So, what brings you to my tavern? Ugh, let it go. Nothing's going to happen between us. You know, normally, I'd expect you to buy me a drink before asking if I want to get out of here. I guess that went right over your head. Never mind. As a matter of fact, I do know a way out. I'm happy to tell you all about it, but this is valuable information we're talking about, and I don't just give it out like some cheap oracle. So... How badly do you want it? Is it worth, say, a thousand denarii to you? Well, I can't tell you too much, or you'd figure it out for yourself. But I promise you, you'll never have to spend another hour in this city ever again. Simple. It's a one-way trip. And I'm not ready to go just yet. I like my life here. One day, maybe. But not now. I think of it this way. I have something of value, and I'm willing to share it for a price. That's not unethical. That's just good business. Now, do you want it or not? If I took your money without giving you what I promised, I'd be breaking the golden rule, wouldn't I? And I have no interest in doing that. What's the matter? Can't afford it? Well, perhaps you could take out a loan. I understand Maliolus has lent money to others, on occasion. I just try not to think about it. Drink helps with that. As the saying goes, to drink is human, so we drink. Certainly, for ten denarii. Have you met Livia? She used to do my hair, until one day she just snapped. This place has that effect on people. Now, she just stands around, caked in filth, muttering nonsense to herself. It's a real shame. Now I have to do my own hair. I hear that if Maliolus is elected, he's gonna throw a small festival to celebrate, with entertainment and everything. Can't wait to find out what it is. Whatever you like. All right, see ya.
What are you doing in here? Can't you see this woman is dying? She's been poisoned. She needs the resin of a plant called Silphium, but that Kulas Cumulates Decius won't give it to me. What? Quick, give it here. Yulia, Yulia, you need to swallow this. Here, let me help you. Hopefully in a moment she should be able to breathe normally. That was extraordinary. How did you know she needed this exact thing? And at this exact moment? Are you some kind of oracle? Ah, uh, look. If you don't want to tell me, I won't look a gift horse in the mouth. But no matter. That was like the gods hearing my prayers and intervening. You just saved a person's life, and you should be proud of yourself. She might even be able to thank you herself in a few moments. And maybe she can tell us who poisoned her, and who she meant when she was muttering about that snake's cruel black eyes. In the meantime, I'm happy to help you with whatever it is you need. I'm Lucretia, and I'm going to be straight with you. I'm not a physician. This is Navia's clinic. I've just been filling in ever since she disappeared. I'm tired and out of my depth and miserable all the time. But I'd rather take this on myself than let one of you lot mess it up. My husband and I moved to Rome from Caesarea. He embraced the Roman way more than I would have liked and turned into an awful philanderer. I would have divorced him and demanded the return of my dowry, but I knew he would sooner have me killed than give me my right. So I waited for the right time to take what was mine and disappear. And then the fires came. As he prepared to evacuate our villa, I gathered our most precious belongings, coins and gemstones, and the moment his back was turned, I ran. I could barely see for the smoke and the streets were full of people trampling each other. I ran for the river, like everyone else, and leapt in. The next thing I remember, I was waking up on a riverbank, not far from here. It's all right. Say what you will about this place. At least my fornicating husband will never find me. And while there's no shortage of snakes here, at least with the golden rule, they have to try to be discreet about it. Oh, this shrine was in use as a clinic long before any of us arrived here. Kind of strange to set up a clinic in the temple of the god of disease. But the god who inflicts a curse is also the only god who can undo it. So I suppose praying to Apollo for healing kind of makes sense. Well, she used to run the clinic. She was a midwife, not a physician. But she was the closest thing we had down here. And she was good, too, until she suddenly lost all interest in us. One day she told me she'd made some profound discovery about the golden statues. This changes everything, she kept saying, but I had no idea what she was talking about. The last time I saw her, the last time any of us saw her, she was muttering to the statues, like she could talk to them. And then she shut herself in the palace, barred the door from the inside, and nobody's seen her since. She's been gone so long now, we figure she's either dead or up to something so strange that she doesn't want anyone else to know about it. But I really wish I could reach her, because that's the only hope I have of solving a troubling problem, a real thorn in the poor situation. One of my patients is suffering from terrible rheumatism. His joints are inflamed and he's in constant pain. I really shouldn't say. He wouldn't like it. And he's a little bit scary. He's become so irritable that the smallest things set him off. And I worry he'll end up losing his temper and lashing out. And you know what that means. I just know Navia would know how to treat him, assuming she's still alive. But nobody seems to know how to get into the palace. Thanks, I suppose. I wish. 
some people here need proper medical care, not the half-baked, hanging-by-a-thread excuse for treatment I'm giving them. Just don't get sick or injured here. I'll do my best to treat you, but I'm out of my depth and dangerously short on everything you can imagine. A city without sin might sound good on paper, but whoever dreamt it up didn't think it through. Maybe it was an attempt to create some kind of utopia. But snakes like Decius will always find loopholes to exploit. And what can we do about it? Absolutely nothing. In some ways, we are worse off because we can't take the law into our own hands. Oh no. Sorry, I don't mean to worry you. But no, that is definitely not normal. There was one other person who claimed she could hear the statues talking to her. But that was Nevia, and uh, she went a little mad. Well, she used to run the clinic. She was a midwife, not a physician. But she was the closest thing we had down here. And she was good, too. Until she suddenly lost all interest in us. One day she told me she'd made some... This changes everything. She the last time I saw her, the and then she shut herself in the back. She's been gone so long now, we figure she's either dead or up to... But I really wish I could reach her. One of my patients... He's become so irritable. I just know Navia would... Really? Be careful who you trust. Oh, it's you. Sorry, I'm still a bit out of it. Uh, but thanks for trying to help me, I suppose. Was there something you wanted? Lucretia says I'm supposed to rest. As much as I'm grateful that you tried to help me, it's just not safe for me to talk about it. Please, no more questions. The Golden Rule. <laughs> That's the least of my worries. The gods may be cruel, but Maliolus and Claudia are far crueler. Please, just leave me alone. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, persistent as Nemesis, aren't you? I can tell you, but it's a long saga. All right. I'd been here about a week. When it dawned on me, I'd be trapped here for the rest of my life. I could hardly breathe, and I knew I had to get out somehow. So when my new friend Aurelia offered me a secret way out, I would have done anything. And then I learned her asking price. A thousand denarii. She was supposed to be my friend. I told her it would take me years to save up that much. So she suggested I take out a loan from Maliolus. And I did. I had to sign an agreement, saying I'd work off the debt over 30 years. But I figured I'd be out of here so soon it wouldn't matter. I paid Aurelia. And she gave me her so-called way out. Do you want to know what it was? Hemlock. It's a deadly poison made from a plant. Drink this, she said, and you'll be out of here in no time. Of course, I demanded my money back, but she refused. She pointed to a sign on her tavern saying, let the buyer beware. Then she just looked at me with those cruel black eyes, and she... She laughed. She immediately told Maliolus I'd tried to escape without paying him back. Only, he didn't seem upset or surprised at all. In fact, he just thanked her. And that's when I realized the two of them had planned the whole thing from the beginning. 
that's what I said to the magistrate. I went to Sentius and begged for help, but he said the law was clear. I'd signed over my labor for 30 years and there was nothing he could do. I thought about resisting too. But Maliola said if I didn't submit, I'd break the golden rule. And I couldn't be responsible for all those deaths, so he locked me in his villa. Confiscated everything I owned as collateral. And made me wear immodest, humiliating outfits while I worked day in, day out. His wife Claudia was just as bad. She sent me to work on an endless stream of futile, demeaning tasks. I'd be on my hands and knees, scrubbing the floor clean for hours, only for her to pour slop on it and hiss, you missed a spot. Those two took everything from me. <sighs> but they forgot to confiscate one thing, my hemlock. I just wanted it to be over, but it seems I messed that up too. Should have drunk all of it. I brought it on myself. I trusted one of the most callous human beings I've ever met and tried to swindle the other. I don't know how I could have been so stupid. When I've recovered, I expect their thug Domitius will come for me. He'll escort me back to their villa, and I'll be right back where I started. Only this time, I won't be able to lull myself to sleep at night with the thought of a permanent solution. Honestly, it would have been better if the poison had been allowed to run its course. I doubt it. It seems this is the fate the gods have chosen for me, for trying to escape. At least until someone breaks the golden rule. Huh. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad. A lot. But it doesn't matter. I... I made a suicide pact with Ulpius last night. He's in exactly the same position as I am. Maliolus and Aurelia set the same trap for him a month after they did it to me. He and I are in this together. He's probably already thrown himself from the bluff into Maliolus's villa by now. If so, I'd never be able to live with myself, knowing I broke my promise to him. I doubt you could make it up to the bluff in time. I don't know who you are, or why you seem so determined to help me, but... Thank you. All right, but please don't take too long. Our priestess, Equitia, once told me it's the god's way of creating a city without sin. But if that's the case, then whichever god is responsible for it didn't think it through. I mean, all it really does is make bad people better at hiding their sins. And good people too frightened to stand up for themselves. I've seen Maliolus, Claudia, and Domitius make grown men cry. Romans. They don't cry easily. They've never physically hurt anyone. But the point is, they don't have to. They've got people running scared because everyone knows Maliolus is the favorite to win today's election. I doubt it. I mean, the election is today, and you've only just arrived. I just don't think there's enough time for you to do anything. But I suppose we will. 
You mean my life story? Oh, well, I grew up as part of a big family in Rome. Me and three older sisters. Our father found good husbands for my sisters, but I wasn't uh, cut out for that kind of life. So he found me a job as a scribe for a prominent merchant. It was a good life for a while, until seven months ago when the fires came. My colleagues and I worked desperately to try to protect our warehouse. We must have had a hundred workers passing buckets of water, chanting prayers to Vulcan, but they fell on deaf ears. The fire was relentless and it claimed everything and everyone. Well, almost everyone. My employer told me to grab what valuables I could and flee for the Tiber with the crowds. I remember diving into the river and then the next thing I knew, I was waking up on the riverbank not far from here. Thank you, but to be honest, sometimes I think dying in that fire might have been a blessing, given what's happened since. If that's your idea of a joke, it's not funny. Go away. I know what kind of person you are. Leave me alone. Fresh me, huh? Citizen. Behavior, I trust. On things, Horatius. As always, priestess.
Salve, friend. I'm Octavia. Welcome to life under the Golden Rule. It's a ghastly thing, is it not? How are you faring so far? All right, well, it was lovely to meet you. I look forward to getting to know you better over the coming months. And if you ever... I can't believe this is how it ends. Oh, no. No. No, 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 no. Wolf Pierce, what are you doing? Get back from there. If you lose your balance, you'll fall. That's the idea. What? Why? Why would you want that? Why do you think I'm stuck for the rest of my life working for a man who treats me like an animal? I know, I know things are hard for you right now. They're hard for all of us. We're all in this together, Alpheus. Please, please just think this through. If you do this, it could be the sin that seals all of our fates. Is that what you want? I'm sorry, but I just don't care anymore. Please, Ulpius. Help him. If he goes through with it, it could be the end for us all. I don't know what to do. I've never had to deal with this sort of thing. Please, you need to talk to him. Thank you. And please, choose your words carefully. Let me guess. You're going to lecture me on how suicide is a crime against the Empire. I screwed up my life. That's what's wrong. I borrowed money and when I couldn't pay it back, I wound up in debt bondage. I'll be stuck slaving away for that Culus Cumulatis Maliolus for the rest of my life. I am out. Wherever you are. Centilla, my love. I'm sorry. Opius, no! I... I can't believe he went through with it. I... Oh, Lord. That poor lamb. Well, I suppose it means suicide isn't a sin under the Golden Rule. So I guess... That means whichever god is responsible for it, it isn't mine. That was not your fault. There's no way you could have given him what he wanted, moments after you arrived. I'll have to let everyone know what happened, and I guess Maliolus will have to clean up the mess in his villa. It's of his own making, after all. And I'd best pray for poor Ulpius. I hope you're coping. Here, in this place, the Magistrate has me earning my keep by cleaning and pruning the gardens. It's not quite how I expected my life to go. I used to live in a lovely villa on the banks of the Tiber. I was even betrothed to a handsome young man from a prominent family. But long hours of menial labour for the good of the community has its own charms too, I suppose. Oh, much the same way as many of the others. When the fires came to Rome, seven months ago, my family and I fled for the Tiber, hoping to escape on a barge. We were among the fortunate ones with enough coins for passage, but unfortunately, there were a lot of desperate people, and they boarded before we could depart. A scuffle broke out, and I was pushed overboard. The last thing I remember was the water, rising up to hit my cheekbone. I woke up by the river, 
near that shrine and stumbled across this place. Oh, that's all right. I'm sure it's all part of God's plan for me. Oh yes, of course, a slip of the tongue. If you like. I'm afraid not. Although I did once hear someone gossiping down at Aurelia's tavern about a possible way out. I don't put a lot of stock in such rumors, but if you're desperate and wealthy, you could look into it, I suppose. If that doesn't work, then I suppose we're all stuck here until gods, uh, the gods, decide our fate. Oh, I see. Well, that doesn't surprise me. I'm sorry I even suggested it. I won't make that mistake again. Please, please keep that to yourself. I know you're not from around here, but... Oh, things are very difficult for us right now. There was a terrible fire in Rome last year, and our emperor decided to make us his scapegoats. There were... executions. It was horrible. Oh, thank you. You have no idea how much I appreciate that. Hmm. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. I think about those words a lot. I'd like to think that if we all love our neighbours as ourselves, and do to them as we'd have them do to us, then we'll all be fine. But on the other hand, I was always taught the intent of man's heart is evil from his youth, and that all of us are born with a tendency towards sin. And that's where I get stuck. Is it true? Are we born with a tendency towards sin? You don't think that's a little naive? Hmm. I suppose you've never seen what I've seen. Innocent men and women, torn apart in arenas while thousands of Romans look on and cheer. If that's true, then sooner or later, things are going to end badly for all of us down here. Unless, of course, there's some kind of divine intervention. Hmm. I wish I shared your faith. Oh, so soon? Well, be gentle on yourself. We're all dealing with a tragic loss today. to you, good citizens, and now, and now, and now, I make this solemn promise to you, good citizens, um, under my leadership you will finally enjoy the freedom you deserve. And, uh, yes, uh, no more shall you walk on the eggshell, eggshell, yes, yes, no more shall you walk on the eggshell, fearing simply to live and breathe the cost. My first act, my first act, yes, magistrate, I, 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 I,